It's my kid that I'm a country type, and you wouldn't be far wrong. For there was rare on spuds and mugs of tea, and the tea was brave and strong. And with porridge for the breakfast and soda bread for supper, and all the spuds a man could eat with great big lumps of butter. Well, I reared a wing the youngsters, and they all grew up right grand. They take me out to places now that I just can't understand. Should the land round on the Sunday and they pick up me and the wife? And we go to these eight houses like you've never seen in your life. We went to this Italian place, all done up in golds and reds. It had a big long name with letters that were mostly A's and Z's. The waiters hovered round us, it was pizza this and pizza that. I pointed to the menu and I said, I'll try a pizza that. He landed with a plate of stuff. It was the size of a manhole cover. And it looked just like a pancake that somebody had vomited over. Says I, is this recycled? For pages I could have swore. It looked like I had, I had been eaten at least once before. I tried my best to cut it, but it stuck together like glue. There was, there was cheese all down my trousers, there was tomatoes in my shoe. I couldn't get the half of it. Do I tried me very best. It was just like sucking chewing gum out of an old string vest. <laughs> the next week we tried this Chinese place, which caused a puzzled frown. Because the menu was all wee pictures and it was written up and down. I pointed to an item that looked like a, a Christmas tree. And a wee thingy with his leg cocked up like a puppy having a pee. Well, the waiter brought a barrel of stuff and well, it looked like old bog mud, but there was something floating round in it, and I don't think it was a spud. <laughs> Says he, this here is bird's nest soup, and it's really quite refined. Jeez, it tasted like the bird had flown and left the lot behind. <laughs> then we got big bowls of rice and, and lovely bits of pork, but they give us a couple of bits of sticks instead of a knife and fork. So I was hoping round the, the bowl with this, trying to pick up this and that. So the half of it was down my shorts and, and the rest was on the mat. Then we tried the Mexicans with their peppers green and red. And they had these big tortilla wraps that tasted like pretty bread. They had sauerkrauts and pretzels and anchovies and the lot. And then they had this stuff called chili. But because it was hot. <laughs> we tried every blooming restaurant and every flaming dish. We even tried that sushi. Jeez, it tasted just like fish. <laughs> the next week we tried this new Irish place with traditional decor. I had a bicycle hanging from the ceiling and a piss pot at the door. <laughs> I ordered steak and chips. Just nearly caused a drama. Because she had honey roast medallion of confed Peruvian llama. Served with wedges. But they, they looked like three corner chips. And multicolored salads and guacamole dips. I said, I'll just have sausages and a, and a couple of scoops of champ. It's the dirty look she gave me. Will you just swear it was a tramp? <laughs> then we tried this new French place. It was called the uh, the Alicard. The waiters all looked down their noses. I thought something was a little fart. <laughs> they, they handed me a menu, which was a crying shame. For the only bloody thing that I could read was the printer's name. For the writing was all fancy and these long curly cues and stuff. But there was one word I did recognise among all the foreign gulf. This cargo. Now he, he was a racehorse that nearly won the Grand National. <laughs> but just hearing him after all this year, I thought a bit irrational. <laughs> when, when he was young and Adam said he was mighty hard to beat. He might be a kind of stringy now, but 
but at least you know it's on your plate. <laughs> but it seems that my deduction was somewhat off the rails. When the waiter brought me order, it was a bloody plate of snails. I said, should this here's bird food? Oh, I didn't beat about the bush. He said, what the hell do you think, me father? You think I'm a bloody thrush? But he said, in France we raise these snails on special farms, be it. I said, well, how do you get a grip of them when you want to wring their neck? Like, it's not like me to complain about other people's eating habits. But one thing in the snail's favour, there'd be a lot handier catch no rabbits. But the final straw was an Indian place called the Star of Old Bengal. The waiter's head was all bandaged. He must have had a foul. I ordered stuff called Vindaloo. It, it, it came in a wee yellow can. I'm not too sure what the wind came from, but just the new I can understand. <laughs> for when I started for the edit, the sweat began to pour. It was running down the shop and my arse and was dripping on the floor. <laughs> I opened up my collar and I threw my coat away. I was steaming like a dunkle that was open on a frosty day. But soon we were in the car and we were heading back for home. And I could feel things not quite right in the nether region zone. <laughs> for my belt began to tighten and, and my face began to frown. And I could feel things start to loosen a wee bit lower down. <laughs> I was sitting with my buttocks clenched and I was shouting faster, faster. Because <laughs> the pressure gauge was on the red and I was damn near disaster. <laughs> Before the car stopped rolling, I jumped out the back and I hit the front door like a drug squad and drained the house for a crack. <laughs> there was buttons flying right and left as I charged down along the hall. If I'd been one second slower, I'd have pebble dashed the wall. <laughs> then the wife came banging on the door, shouting off her head. I says, for Christ's sake, woman, it's coming out like trout. <laughs> I've been sitting here without a break for nearly half an hour. I've a hump across my back like a week out for the scour. <laughs> I says, you'll have to get me a cork if you really want to go. <laughs> she says, I've used it on myself, I've already filled the pole. <laughs> well, I swore a note at Tony Unbelk. As I sat in pain and rage, that I'd live on spuds and butter till I reach a grand old age. Thank you.